let's say you're looking at getting a 4K editing computer. What specs do you go for? This is a question I see a lot of people ask on various social media groups and forums saying, are these specs sufficient for editing 4K video? And if you try and research this online, it doesn't seem to make things any clearer. With people giving you budget PC builds and middle of the road PC builds and higher end PC builds, but the problem is that they just uniformly increase all of the parts. So the budget PC has a budget end processor and a budget end graphics card, budget end hard drive, budget end RAM. The mid tier build will have mid tier components of everything and the high end build will have high end components of everything. But when you actually assess what components are used when it comes to 4K editing, it gives you a much clearer idea as to what are the important components and what aren't. For example, I've seen people online in the past say that for a 4K PC, you must have at least a 32 gig of RAM, uh, an SSD hard drive, like a terabyte SSD, uh, a middle of the road graphics card, and at least a middle of the road CPU as well. Well, the problem is that it does depend on what 4K you're actually trying to edit. For example, you might be someone like me where I'm primarily shooting you know, videos for YouTube. I'm using Sony cameras that shoot 4K up to 100 megabits a second bitrate max. Or you might be someone who's doing far bigger budget productions. You're using cameras with much higher bit rates, you know, like cine cameras, for example, and you're using multiple cameras and you've got seven, like three or four or more layers of video and audio that is obviously gonna take a lot more processing. But for what I do, these sorts of videos, the current rig that I have is more than adequate. I have uh, an Intel i7-8700 processor, 32 gig of DDR4 RAM, the video files are stored on a one terabyte SSD, and my GPU is this GTX 1660 Ti. But why is the GPU in my hand if it's not in my computer? The reason is I've just upgraded to an RTX 2060 Super. Now, I'll be honest, the reason why I have upgraded has nothing to do with video editing at all. It's more for a gaming perspective. But since I'm changing the components anyway, I thought I would do a bit of an experiment and compare up how each component is being utilized through the various stages of editing 4K video to try and work out what components do you actually need to prioritize if you are looking at making a PC build for editing 4K video. So I came up with a little benchmark scenario where I used the same video clips and I edit them in the same way, utilizing various different processes and then exported them. And then I would measure the performances by one, time for certain processes to take effect, and two, using MSI Afterburner to monitor how each of the components are being utilized, namely CPU, GPU, and RAM usage. And I would do it on my computer with the GTX 1660, and then I would do it with the RTX 2060 Super, and I would also do it on a laptop just to see how much of a difference everything made. Now on paper specs benchmarks alone, the RTX 2060 Super is 40% more powerful than the GTX 1660 Ti. So in theory, the video editing should see a bump in performance. Well, the first thing I did was I loaded in a about five minute long 4K video clip and I played back the first 30 seconds at full quality resolution. Now generally on a low spec computer, trying to play back 4K video, you do get some frame drops and some stuttering. I would then cut out five chunks of video clips, delete those five sections and bring everything back together. Again, lower spec computers would generally see higher usages whilst you're trying to do that. I then had a 10 second video clip that I'd shot handheld that I would add a warp stabilizer effect on and I would time how long it took the computer from me adding the warp stabilizer effect to it finishing rendering it all. And then I would export a one minute section of 4K video, again, timing how long from me clicking export to it finishing all together. Now with the PC build, the 4K playback was pretty much faultless. There was no drop frames, there, it took no extra time to do. It would play back pretty seamlessly with one video clip. And in terms of component usage, nothing was being particularly pushed at that point. 
Then when we come to the warp stabilizer effect, adding the warp stabilizer with the 1660 Ti took 1 minute 36 seconds. The CPU maxed out at 98% usage, but that was mainly through the export, which is where the CPU is really being used. Throughout the playback and the warp stabilizer, there was some increase in CPU usage. Now, strangely, the RAM, although there is 32 gig in the computer and 25 gig is allocated to Premiere Pro, it never goes above about 17 gig. Now, I know on the chart that I'm showing you here, it does show it as maxing out at 25 gig, but that might be because some numbskull called me happened to open Photoshop at the same time. But when I've reran them again, the RAM usage never goes above about 17 gig. So seemingly, at least for these sorts of videos, 32 gig is excessive. 16 gig would be more than sufficient. And the GPU never went above 44% at any point. So shock horror, when I switched over to the 2060 Super and I reran the benchmarks, nothing changed in terms of performance. The warp stabilizer took 135 to complete and the export took 128, which those could be put down to margins of error. So essentially there's no real difference to performance and that's mirrored by the GPU usage, which only maxed out at 33%. All that having a faster GPU means is that there's more of the GPU that's sitting around doing nothing whilst I'm editing all my videos. Now, just for giggles, everyone tells you 4K video editing, you need a large capacity SSD drive. So what I did is I took that same test folder off the SSD drive and copied it onto a four terabyte spin drive. And I reran the same experiments again. Now, granted, Premiere Pro at this point is still loaded onto an SSD drive, so the program's still able to run really quickly, but the video files that it's having to access are stored on a hard drive disk. Now, this test was done back with the 1660 Ti, which on an SSD did the warp stabilizer in 136 and the export in 130. And on a spin disk drive, it did the warp stabilizer in 138 and did the export in 128. Now again, factoring for margins of error, it seems that there's actually little difference in performance from a spin disk drive to a solid state drive. Now again, that's only on a very simplistic video clip. If, you're, if you've got a lot of information, a lot of video clips, then having that faster hard drive might see a performance increase. Basically though, for small scale stuff, you don't have to sweat needing an SSD. So overall, the PC spec seem to suggest that anything more than about 16 gig of RAM is pretty redundant. A GPU is pretty redundant. It really all comes down to the processor. Now my current processor, that 8700, is a six core, 12 thread, 3.2 gigahertz processor. And it is running stock. I've not overclocked it or anything. Now, the interesting comparison here is the laptop. This is an Asus VivoBook, which is fitted with an Intel i5-7200U processor, which is a two-core, four-thread running at 2.5 gigahertz. It's also fitted with a GTX 940M graphics chip, 16 gig of RAM, and an M.2 SSD drive. Now, whereas with the PC, the warp stabilizer effect took about a minute and a half to complete, on the laptop, it took two and a half minutes. So it took a fair chunk longer to try and render a stabilizer effect. The export, again, on the PC took about a minute 30. On the laptop, however, took over four and a half minutes. So substantially longer to export a 4K video clip. However, the actual editing process, cutting everything down, the laptop's still able to do it. What you can see from the graphs throughout the timeline is that the playback the CPU usage does run quite high, but never maxes out. The program does seem to struggle a little bit. It drops occasional frames, but that's running at full playback resolution. If you drop it to a half or a quarter, it runs a whole lot smoother. Where it really hit the limit was with the export. The processor was running at 100%, all the way through the export and unlike the PC where the processor was kind of spiking in bits and pieces this was up to 100% and it stayed flatlined maxed out until it had finished rendering so that's where it really requires the horsepower of the processor and this slower two core four thread processor really does struggle with that 
It's not incapable of doing it, it just takes longer to do it. But the really interesting bit is that at no point did the GPU chip in this, which bearing in mind a 940 is a really low end graphics chip anyway, never went above 77% utilization. So at no point did this even come close to maxing out. But I kind of already knew that because to be honest, I'd been using this for editing 4K videos on the go for quite a long time. In fact, more often than not, I was editing the videos off a USB 3 external hard drive. So really the big takeaway from this is that you don't actually need a really high spec computer to start attempting to edit 4K video as long as they are fairly simplistic videos. Admittedly, if you're trying to make a Hollywood blockbuster with a dozen cine cameras, I probably wouldn't recommend your laptop. But for these sorts of videos, you know, that you're doing occasionally, fairly low spec computers are more than capable of handling it all. And if you are looking at getting a new PC build and you're customizing the specs for it, what components should you actually go for? Well, as we've already established, if you're trying to keep it on a budget, 16 gig of RAM, more than sufficient. In terms of hard drive, large capacity SSDs are pretty expensive. So I would say a workaround for that is get a smaller capacity SSD that you can store the, uh, the program on and maybe the video files that you're immediately using for that one particular video and then have a larger capacity hard disk drive that you can move everything to and archive it once you've finished. In terms of GPU, as we've established, they're not particularly relevant for Premiere Pro. It doesn't seem to utilize that much GPU performance, even with CUDA acceleration on. So a low-end GPU like a 1650, for example, will be more than sufficient. What really makes the difference with performance is your processor. Having more cores and more threads gives the computer more space and room to be able to push all that rendering through. Now, even though I'm currently using an Intel processor, if you're looking at building a PC now, I would actually recommend switching to an AMD Ryzen processor. The budget 3600, which you can pick up for about 170 pounds, carries pretty much the same specs as the Intel that I currently have. That's a good kind of base package, if you like, for a good starter setup. If you've got a little bit of headroom in your budget and you do want to get a better component that is going to make a big difference, the processor is definitely the one to go for. And I would recommend going up not to the 3600X because there's pretty much no difference to it. Jump up to the 3700X, which is an 8-core 16-thread. In fact, whenever I come to rebuilding my PC, that is what I am planning on going for. Hopefully, if you were someone who is considering building their own PC now specific for 4K video editing, this is giving you a bit of a clearer insight as to which components you should be focusing on. Obviously, if you're after a computer like me that is not just for video editing, but also for gaming as well, then yes, a graphics card is going to be more important to you. But just for 4K video editing, the CPU is really what makes all the difference. But as always, guys, if you have any questions or queries, comment boxes down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button and checking out my Patreon accounts as well. Thank you so much for stopping by, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.